All right, so it's been a while since I've uploaded a video. I thought I would at least post a quick update. No actual work will get done in this video, but again, I thought I would just uh, sort of update on where things are. I did go ahead and remake the horizontal stabilizer stringers. Uh, I mentioned earlier that uh, I wasn't happy with how some of the machine countersinking of some of the holes turned out, and I wanted to remake those parts, so I did go ahead and order them and, and remake them. I did the countersinking with my drill press and uh, used a little block of wood. Maybe I'll put a little picture right up here and show the setup. Uh, but you know, I used a block of wood as a fixture with a little shim, uh, similar to what I did when I machine countersunk the spars, and it all worked out fine. I was also really happy with uh, how the holes are going to line up with the skins. I did not need to go back and rematch drill everything. You know, I was worried about how I was going to clico or hold everything together to match drill the new stringers to the already dimpled skins and you know when I got the new stringers and, and started looking at the holes they were already number 40 I mean I could pass a number 40 drill bit through the holes uh, no problem a rivet you know a 330 second rivet fits in them no problem and you know especially uh, the pilot of the countersink cutter fit in there, you know, fit in the existing holes with no binding or anything like that. So, long story short, I just didn't go back and try to match drill those holes to the to the skins. Uh, I checked and they're going to line up, the holes are going to line up fine. I don't know if I'm starting to get uh, Van's new final drilled parts or, quite honestly, I've noticed all the, most of the parts in my kit, when you Clico things together and match drill, a lot of times, or, or final drill, I should say, I, I think is probably the, the more correct term. A lot of times those parts, you're not really removing much, if any, material uh, when you do that, that final drill step. Uh, obviously, there's some match drilling where you're upsizing the hole a good bit, and obviously you have to do that. But these were not that, that way. Everything worked out fine, so I was really happy about that. Also, as you can maybe see, I've primed everything. So I uh, did that last weekend and I made these frames. So I thought I'd talk about these for a little bit. Uh, with the vertical stabilizer and the rudder, I held the various parts, either hanging them from hooks from some PVC frames that I made or uh, on some pink foam board. And that worked okay. Uh, but one of the problems is, you know, the parts would blow around in the airstream from the, from the sprayer. And uh, plus, I just I had not made enough uh, PVC frames to be able to hold, you know, there's more parts in the horizontal stabilizer and I didn't have that many. Turns out I was reading uh, an issue of the EAA, was it Sport Pilot? EAA magazine uh, several months ago and there was an article talking about building frames to hold smaller parts when you're spraying them to paint or prime them. And it actually talked about using stove wire. Now, this is not stove wire, it's just nylon string, just overgrown kite string or nylon you know, string that you get at the hardware store. I actually did buy some of the stove wire. It's sort of halfway between, or it's, it's thicker than safety wire, but not nearly as, as thick uh, as like bailing wire. It's just this very malleable uh, steel wire. And you know, the idea is it's, it's bendable enough to feed through the holes in, in the parts but um, and, and kind of pull tight, but it's stiff enough that once you've done that, the parts won't really move around on you. And so, again, I bought some. It's about seven bucks for a big old roll, but only ended up using it in a couple of places. And that's because as I was you know, feeding it through some of these thinner parts, you know, there's kind of a scraping fingernails on a chalkboard sort of thing with that steel wire going through the holes in these aluminum parts and it, it bugged me that you know, I was scraping this stuff through holes that I had gone to great pains to um, you know deburr and and make nice uh, so that they wouldn't have any stress risers and now I'm scraping wire through there so I sort of chickened out on the wire for the thinner parts and just used this string a little worried that the parts would be able to move around and that's the point of the wire is to keep it from doing that but with the string a little bit loose like this, it actually worked out pretty well because you know when, when you hit the parts at any kind of an angle, they tend to bind on the string a little bit, and so that worked great. Um, you know, I did use the wire. Let's see, I 
I've used the wire for some of the thicker parts, like the stringers, and uh, that worked well. Of course, if I had used string here, these could have rotated around, so that wouldn't work. And I did put some tape here just so that, you know, if any of these parts did move, they, they would only go so far. So anyway, these frames worked out great. Uh, they were super convenient. It was nice. Even though I've got a good about, good bit of room in my makeshift paint booth, uh, it was nice to be able to pick things up, you know, just a whole group of parts, pick them up, move them around, spray one side, flip the whole thing around, spray the other side, rotate it so I could get, you know, all these different angles. I could, I moved everything over, you know, close to the window and, you know, I would do one near the window where I had good light move it out of the way, grab another one, take it over. I was leaning it up against uh, some sawhorses that I had in there with me. And uh, that worked really well. I actually thought about doing some of the priming outside, but it was too cold. Um, but that was another thing. It occurred to me it'd be really convenient to be able you know, to prime outdoors if the weather was, was right uh, also with these frames. So love how these worked out. Another advantage is that they're kind of a good storage system. Um, I'll, I'll pretty much need all these parts at about the same time when I start assembling everything, but uh, you know, still, I'll just leave them on these frames until until I need them, and uh, you know that'll be that's kind of convenient. Three frames and all the parts, all right there. Uh, one last little advantage of these things, and this is kind of minor, but you know, I mark all the all the parts with a blue sharpie, and you know, like number the ribs and everything for their position along the, the spars. But then when I'm about to prime, I go and I clean everything with uh, some gray scotch bright and acetone. And of course that takes the sharpie marks off. Uh, now what I usually do is just have a sharpie ready to remark them before I lose track of what's what. But it did occur to me that with these frames, because I went ahead and assembled the parts on the frames uh, before I cleaned everything, I just took pictures of each of the frames from both sides and you know different angles to where I could see the numbers, uh, you know, see the, the markings on the parts. And that way, as long as I can tell the orientation of the frames uh, by looking at the pictures, I could go back and if, if all the marks were gone, I could go back and remark things, uh, you know, once I was done priming before I take everything off. And so that was kind of a little plus. Um, I didn't mean to do that, but Again, I, I took the pictures kind of as a safety net, and, and so that was kind of an advantage as well. So anyway, that's the update. That's where I am. I'm really happy to get to this point finally. Uh, it's taken me way too long, but I'm excited to start assembling this thing and riveting things back together. Uh, so that should be uh, coming soon.